Hello. Oh, like I just landed a giant ski. You know those ski jumps? Hello. I didn't land it. Okay. Go. And we're here. Welcome in to another episode of Farm to Fame. Kelsey Wingert, Peter Moylan, Maddie Mass. Here with you once again. Doesn't change. Same people every week. Remember last week how I said that sometimes people say I look like Ryan Reynolds and I run with it? Mm-hmm. Well, today on the Rose Rotation or on the Rose IG Live, mm-hmm. I got told I look like Ben Affleck. Oh, and cool funny. Ben Affleck. Batman Ben Affleck. So I'm going to roll with that for today's episode. So if you okay. can refer to me as either Ben or Batman, okay. the length of this episode, I would much appreciate it. Put that in my mental notes today, Ben. Thank you. K-Nug is, I gave myself a new nickname the other week. K-Nug. K-Nug. Um, because all of my best friends call me Chicken Winger. You know how everybody has like that friend growing up who gets the kids meal, chicken tenders and lemonade everywhere that they go to eat? That was yeah. me. So my best friends either call me Nugget or Chicken Wingert. And when I was with the Braves, Paul Bird tweeted out like, hey, Kelsey's working in baseball and she needs a nickname. What should a nickname be? Expecting like fans to help up with that, like viewers. And instead, my best friend Rocky tweeted him and said her nickname is Nugget. So Paul started calling me Nugget on air. And then I gave myself the nickname K Nug the other week. Got that, we'll, we'll, cut, we'll, we'll cut that out, Maddie. Don't worry. Just, just. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a lot to get to because... I'm the one that's supposed to be rambling, not you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the NCAA tournament's in full swing. Oh, As we goodness. tape this on Monday, five teams have clenched their way to Omaha. We have some... Uh, Shocking results. Good stories there. We'll update you on the Rookie of the Year watch. The AL Rookie of the Year watch is still unattractive not (laughs) saying that the men i don't have an opinion on what they look like it's just it's not fun it's not fun the nl's fun and top 10 prospects um some interesting stories in there including Mm -hmm. a one one and then we're gonna get to some aussie lingo and some a very sad injury so this episode once again is brought to you by win reality okay tennessee Vanderbilt, Texas, what's something they all have in common? They just clenched their ticket to Omaha. What's another thing they all have in common that they use when reality? You've heard us talk about this for the last few weeks, um, but some of the top, obviously I just mentioned that some of the top programs in the country are using win reality and it's providing baseball and softball players with virtual reality training because my friends, we're in the future. The future, we in it. And we are training virtually now. Um, you can choose from 300 different pitchers, 800 different training modes. And it's just a really cool way and a unique way to get ahead of the competition. Peter has said this is like the next thing to give it is hitters a leg up over the pitchers. Um, yep. So when reality is hooking it up for our listeners who want to train like the elite without spending elite money, because mm-hmm. once again, we don't got elite money economy. Um, so you can turn your basement or bedroom into a batter's box. If you head to winreality.com and use the code farm to train free for your first month. So winreality.com, code farm, and you get a whole month free. At That's the very cool. least, check out their YouTube channel, check out their videos online, check out their social media because it's really cool. Check yeah, you it went out. You were on their podcast, didn't you? I did. That yeah. well? It looked it like did. super cool. You were in like a, the guy was like in a studio and you were on right. a big screen. Yeah. And so when I recorded it, not to call them out, but when I recorded it, it was a green screen, but okay. they made it look really cool at the end. So I know, right? <laughs> What's wrong with you? A, yeah. Actually, what you're seeing behind me is actually all green screen too. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even here. Um, but no, it was cool. It was cool. It was good. That's awesome. Did you learn yeah. anything? They're here and they're here to stay. And I'm going to go down there and check out the factory. Uh, oh, I'm wow. check out the studio and, and yeah, they're in Austin. Oh my gosh. At some point I'm going to make a trip to Austin and I'm going to go and put on the, put on the goggles and, and see how it's, I'm just interested because I, I from everyone's reaction, it's like, man, it looks so real and you can be able to track them. But I want to see, I want to get a sense of actually just how real it is. Because if it's just like sticky guys moving and it's, 
then it's not going to be that much of an advantage. But if it's legitimately, wow, that looks like Craig Kimbrell throwing 97 mile hour fuzzballs, yeah. then I'll be, I'll be interested to see it. But yeah, win reality, check them out. Who's your bat from today? I'll go figure it. Let's just, uh, hmm. the lucky dip, the lucky dip. My bat is from the Yankees this week. Oh, this Ooh. is a good one. Okay. It's got pine tar. Sorry, game used. <laughs> bit, of, bit of pine tar with, with dog hair mix. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's the good. best kind. This is from Michael Young, Texas okay. Rangers legend, Michael Young. It says, Peter, to a great teammate and a funny dude. Hmm. So didn't really go the personal. We just decided to keep it. You, you are know. funny, though. I am quite hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So Michael Young, thank you. He's still with the Rangers in some capacity right now. Yeah. In their front office. Uh, Matty Mash, you got any life updates? Back from Florida. Hmm. So no longer in John Boy Media Tampa office, which I was told is not a real thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was staying then, but. I was also in Florida this week. My best friend just moved to Sarasota. Love that for me, truly. So I went and I visited her and her boyfriend and left my laptop charger in Florida and had to panic and go find one today. And also, I've been shaken up today. Peter, you missed the story. I told Maddie when, we, when you couldn't find the link to get on our call. Excuse me. Um, I could not. It, it wasn't did that not I couldn't arrive find in your the inbox. Link. That's better. You make it sound Sorry. like I don't know nope. how to work the simple not thing called error. email, Kelsey. No. Um, but I was like so tired from this week that last night I fell asleep and I have no recollection of falling asleep. And I woke up and like my blue light glasses were just laying next to me in bed. My phone was underneath my bed on the floor. You just crashed out. I, I don't think I've ever legitimately fallen asleep for the entire night, like with my phone in my hand. But like that's, that's what happened. And I just don't remember it like at all. So that's awesome. Um, scary, but awesome. So let's go ahead and get to our opener, the opener segment, talking about the road to Omaha, folks. Wow, wow. Eight teams get to call TD Ameritrade home for a week. Five, as of Monday, have clinched. The five mm -hmm. are Vanderbilt, mm -hmm. Tennessee, mm -hmm. NC State. Shocking. Yeah. Stanford, yeah. Mm. Texas, mm. and Arizona. Mm. congratulations to those teams um peter there's a lot of storylines we will only hit on a few yes um which route do you want to take first do you want to go i'm gonna go the, the kumar vandy because we you know i feel like putting a bow on their regular seasons to this point or their seasons we hit on them specifically in one of our mini episodes so i think mm -hmm. the vander boys are something that I'd like to touch on, but they are going to be a tough matchup for anybody moving forward. Yeah. And we witnessed it, obviously, uh, over the weekend. Kumar was ridiculous, went up against uh, Gavin Williams, who suffered his first loss of the year on the weekend. But Rocker threw 117 pitches, seven two-third innings, 11 punch-outs. Williams, seven and a third innings, 13 punch-outs, 111 pitches. So we're talking about just good, old-school pitchers duel their, their offense is something that scared me, but Vandy obviously took the lead uh, one, two, nothing. So that pitching lineup of Lida and Kumar Rocker, I, like and the facing super basically big leaguers. Best two out of three. Like, what get. are you going to do? What, what, and you just got to hope that you're, in, oh, by the way, Lida, seven innings, one single and one home run. The guy that hit the home run was named Josh Moylan. Did you know that? Oh, Moylan. Yeah. So there's another Moylan, Moylan over here doing good things. Yeah. I love that for you. But um, yeah, I just to go back, I feel like Rocker's stock has kind of gone down a little mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. in the middle of the season. And then mm -hmm. it's just towards the end, he's just sort of gone up. So uh, Tim Corbin was saying that the thing that separates him is his competitiveness. Yeah. His will to want to win and his love for just being in the middle of the diamond and having it all on his shoulders, which is something that uh, will be great for him as he moves through his big league career. After Kumar's start, again, I know you mentioned it, but seven and two-thirds scoreless, yeah. 11 Ks. 11 Ks. And a ton of pitches, 117. That's yeah. like in Super Regionals, in game one of Super Regionals, that's like a career. Yeah. I mean, it just. Defining moment. Yeah. And Jack Leiter follows it up. It's almost like they've 
they feed off of each other because there's been so much competitiveness between who's going to go one, mm -hmm. who's going to go two. And now we're hoping to see both of them go in the top five. But did you see the images of his mom crying? I think realizing that that was his last game that he was going to pitch. Kumar or Jack? Kumar Rocker's mom, yeah, was uh, was brought to tears as he was walking off the field. Might be his last game at that stadium. Yeah, will be. Yeah, so. You look at their season ERA. So like you said, again, Jack Leiter threw, followed that up with seven innings of one run ball. Um, how many strikeouts did Jack have? He had 10. So both double digits in strikeouts, both yeah. seven innings. So Jack Leiter, 216 ERA, 10 and three. Um, 96 innings pitched, 156 strikeouts to 41 mm -hmm. walks. Kumar Rocker, a 246 ERA, 13 and three record, 106 innings pitched, and 155 strikeouts to 36 walks. So, and to give you an idea of what it's like facing these guys in a best two out of three, they combined for 14 and a third innings, five hits, 21 strikeouts. That's insane. And one run. I, we've had this conversation before. Who are you taking? I'm not going to say first because I don't it, know if they're going to go. A lot of the mock drafts don't have them going first. But who would you take, Kumar or Jack, before I'm the still, other? I'm still probably taking Jack. Okay. I don't think you can miss, but I'm just, for the sake of answering the question, I'm still going to take Jack. I just think I, he's a little bit more polished. Uh, and also depends on who I am as a team. If I'm a, yeah. if I'm a team that's looking to, to add a, a starter next, maybe next year or the year after to put into the rotation, then I go with someone a little bit more polished. If I'm not looking to compete for another couple of years, then maybe I go with a rocker because I know that the upside might be, you know, he's six foot 48 and 207,000 pounds. So he yeah. just stands up there looks like a monster. Um, I don't think you can, as I said, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. But if I'm choosing and I want to compete soon, I'm going with Jack. I'll be very anxious, obviously, to see where they go, but also to see how quickly they get to the show. Because yeah. we've seen some guys, obviously, recently get drafted and not play a minor league season and make their big league debut. Obviously, that's not going to happen to Jack and Kumar, but those yeah. guys were playing at one of the most prestigious baseball universities you can play at. They've been through the gauntlet there. and So um, this hits on an interesting subject for me because I feel like – as far as college pitchers go, mm -hmm. the way that they've set up these colleges now with their pitching labs and their and their their analytics departments that they have, guys are coming out of college and they're already close to being big league ready now. I think back in the day, there was that seasoning where they needed to go down and, and get used to a full season and that sort of stuff. There is the difference in the rotation. It's once a week as opposed to once every five days. So there is, I guess there's a little bit of time yeah. to, to get used to that. But I just think that there's, the, the pitches are, are almost big league ready when they come out of college now. Yeah, it's amazing. And especially yeah. like you mentioned, when you're at universities like that, it's just the technology that they have is comparable to a big league organization. I mean, yeah, when you get into doubt. the SEC and those schools, the amount of money that they have going into those programs, the amount of money they're making. Yeah, that'll yeah. be, I'll be very intrigued to watch both of them. Another big story was number one, Arkansas was upset at home by NC State. But I think the biggest line about yesterday was that our guy, our guy guy, Kevin Copps, I believe it was his first start of the season. I think I read an article that said it was the first start in four years, but I can't. That might be right, because I, I okay. can't. I don't know that. But he pitched, gosh, he was such a bulldog yesterday. Eight innings, three runs, nine Ks. He was around 120 pitches. He's never gone above like 90 pitches. Mm. And he had pitched two scoreless innings the day before. And, oh, my gosh, he gave up the home run in his final inning and just went over to one of his coaches and was just crying, like crying in his arms. And I it like crushed you because you know, cause it, that gave up the lead. That was the go ahead run. Mm. And he literally left every ounce of him on that mound. And mm. I can't imagine that mental battle of feeling like he lost the game for them you know, because, because that run gave him the lead and he was just torn apart and what he had done this season, Peter, he's going to win the golden spikes. He should win the golden spikes. If he doesn't win that award, I will paint one of your cleats golden and mail it to him. Okay. Um, 
which might carry just as much weight as the actual Golden Spikes Award. I believe so. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So he got the start in game three, which Peter, I'd, I'd be intrigued to get your take on because he's obviously not a starting pitcher. He's a long mm-hmm. relief guy, mm-hmm. but he's your best pitcher. And they, you don't want to get beaten knowing that you didn't have your best guy on the mound, I guess. Right. But your best guy's usage has been little less than 120 pitches. So did you do him a disservice mm-hmm. by expecting him to be able to come back after throwing two innings a day before mm-hmm. and throw the way he did? But you'd take eight innings, three runs from anybody, right? Without like, question, especially when you've been the, the number one team in the country for the whole year. I mean, how many games did they not score more than three runs this year? Yeah, they were good offense. Like, uh, they've been ridiculous all year. So I saw NC State at the ACC tournament and I, I thought they were good. And to come back from the absolute smashing they took the night before too. Yeah. Wasn't it like 16 to two the night before or something like that? 16 to four or something? Yeah. I mean, at that point, you're like, well, we've got nothing to lose, guys. I might as well go out there and give it a shot. And they pulled it off. Crazy. I'm surprised that Cops isn't expected to go higher. I haven't seen him going before the fifth round. And he threw 13 and a third scoreless innings in regionals. He was named MVP. Going into yesterday's game, he had a .66 ERA that was first in Division One baseball, a 0.71 whip, which is first in Division One baseball, and 12 wins, which is tied for second in Division One baseball. A reminder, he is a reliever. He also had 10 saves. Um, so the season that he put together, Peter, and the stages he was able to do it on and perform at, whatever questions teams have that don't have him going super high in the draft, I'm hoping that maybe he silenced some of that because he's performing on the biggest stage against the best teams. That's just the case of he may be a bulldog and he may be able to get guys out. But unfortunately, what he has probably doesn't translate to what scouts or what the Rapsodos and Trackmans are wanting to see. That's the argument that that people are still putting forward the old versus the new. And it's the, you know, it's isn't it all about outs? Isn't it? Doesn't matter how pretty you are while you're doing it. It's about getting people out. So teams want swing and miss stuff. Teams want high velo. Teams want to to go with the stuff that traditionally has a higher percentage chance of succeeding if you've got high velo and, and that stuff element. Whereas if you're just a pitcher guy, maybe that pitcher guy can only get you so far. Mm-hmm. He, he's going to get drafted and then he's yeah. going to get the chance to prove himself all over again. Well, make it known. I believe in Kevin Copps. You've um, made it. Very, very yep. well known. Very yeah. impressed with what he did. Also super impressed with the Arkansas fan base. I, as an LSU Tiger, um, have a hard time saying that any schools have a better environment than what I've experienced in Tiger Stadium, what I've mm-hmm. experienced in Alec Box. And in the regional, man, and in the super regionals, Arkansas, their baseball fan base, man, that's a bucket list thing for me now to get out to a game there because that environment was absolutely insane do you think it was a combination of one the environment and two everyone's been stuck inside for so long and everyone was so happy just to be outside and screaming and yelling at each other and throwing beer on each other and yeah well i I tweeted some stuff out about it and i got kind of like roasted by people i was like y'all are taking this wrong way i'm complimenting your fan base i'm not like Hmm. i i tweeted out like i didn't know arkansas's fan base got down like this and i'm here for every bit of it and people are like i can't believe you didn't know that and i'm like i'm trying to give you a couple minutes. So right. I guess it's been like that, but it, yeah, it was super cool. The only other story that I would like to touch on about Omaha, Peter mm. is pulmonary LSU's head coach retiring. If you watched LSU's game versus Tennessee, when they lost very badly yesterday, ESPN had a camera on pulmonary, essentially the whole inning. And he was like to the side of the game, the whole time the game was going on the whole ninth inning, he was just crying. And it was so tough to watch and he said after his father was an incredible baseball coach as well and passed away in 2019 and he said he was thinking about conversations with his dad and he was thinking about his family and everything that that they've been through to allow him to have this 39 year brilliant career but yeah he won a national championship in 2009 with LSU he made six college world series appearances 1,505 wins Wow. Do you have the numbers all time or? Is- I think he was one of like five active coaches to reach 1500 wins, wow. but he had 39 seasons as a coach, 15 with LSU. He's a hall of famer. I love my tigers. We had no business being in a super regional this year. It was the worst team LSU baseball has had in over a decade, but which is still an incredible 
baseball team on any other scale on any other level because LSU is known for baseball but they had the they were 13 and 17 in SEC play in the regular season they lost their ace Jaden Hill who was expected to go if you saw some mock drafts top five pick this year lost him for the season and they just weren't what they normally were and they made it to a freaking super regional um, which is absolutely amazing and it was so cool to see pulmonary's career end on such a good note to allow him to coach another week so by the time you guys are listening to this on wednesday the three other teams will have clinched their spot to omaha and the field Mm -hmm. will be set if you haven't made it to omaha td ameritrade whether your team is there or not that year do it if you're a college baseball fan it's amazing the tennessee coach was basically saying everybody let's go pack yourselves up that's a program too that seems to be having a little, little bit of fun right now yeah and their manager is like hot boy list yeah yeah, the manager's a good-looking cat. LSU is courting him for their coaching vacancy, and they like him. I was seeing, obviously, I knew a lot of people, you know, a lot of LSU people were at the at the game, and people were wearing jerseys with his last name on it. They're like, screw the players. We like the coach. They said That's it's like great. a cult following for him there. A lot of Southern mums out there rocking his name, I bet. Yeah. Um, did you hear about Andy Burns this week no. for the Dodgers, Peter? No. I think you're going to like this cat. I read an article by Rowan Kavner. He writes for Dodger Insider. Andy Burns was called up on Saturday and started at second base for the Dodgers. That was his first major league start. And he also pitched, it's not a pitcher, pitched in the ninth inning. So in that game, he got his first major league start, his first major league hit, and he pitched. And he became the first position player in at least the expansion era to pitch in a game, which he recorded his first career hit in. That was from Sarah Langs. But- he made his debut in 2016 as a pinch runner for the Blue Jays. It took him five years to get back to the show. And he played oh, in the KBO, Korean Baseball League, in 2017, 2018. He returned to the Blue Jays on a minor league deal in February, spent that year in Buffalo with their AAA team. Then he'd never, he didn't get the call. So that winter, he played in the Australian Baseball League. Mm-hmm. He hit 311 in 35 games and then he joined the Dodgers this season and he just like grinded traveling all over the place just trying to get a chance um he was drafted in 2011 and he only had seven uh plate appearances in his career and he got his first big league start got a pin and got a hit that's ridiculous for the Dodgers and he was doing really good in AAA he had an active he had a 10 game hitting streak um, where he was hitting 515 and the Dodgers have had so many crazy injuries this year that they've needed to call on guys but um, it's cool to see a guy I mean you get such a small taste of it in 2016 and he just wanted it again and he got it mm. I think you know how we talk about records that won't ever be broken Cal mm-hmm. Ripken's record Joe DiMaggio's record Cy Young's record that may be one that never gets broken Name a guy that yeah. pitched and got his first hit, unless it's a pitcher, obviously, but not a position player. You're never going to have a position player that gets his first start, not at pitcher, gets a knock, yeah. and then has to pitch yeah. ever again. Yeah, I've never heard of it. I love those stories. And I love that he was going to the KBO. He was going to Australia. He was just mm-hmm. like finding ways to make it work, and he made it work. And Good on him. I'll be curious to see how long he's up there. Um, but the Dodgers, everybody's battling a ton of injuries right now. Phillies with Luke Williams. That was a cool story. Walk off home run in his first major league start. He debuted that day as well. Yeah, great. The, yeah, but you got to see that because mm. it was a two run home run in a one to nothing game. Was it against Braves. who? I didn't see it. Anyway, speaking of Australia, um, <laughs> personal news. <laughs> uh, I have to report to all my farmers out there mm. that. Australia will no longer be competing in the Olympic qualifying tournament due to logistical nightmares getting back into the country. So it's been a tough couple of days. Taiwan pulled out because there was an outbreak in Taiwan where the tournament was originally supposed to be held and then they had to move it to Mexico. So now it's in Mexico at the end of this month, 24th of this month. But there's only going to be four teams or five teams competing for that last spot. And Australia won't be one of them. So my national team coaching dreams will have to be put on hold for a couple of months. Well, and us 
as Americans who aren't familiar with geography, yes. you said that I didn't realize this, that it was only a six hour flight yes. for them originally. Yes. So that's a much easier situation for them than having to fly all the way to Mexico. Yes. Plus there would have been a chance for them to fly straight back home. Uh, they would have been in a bubble situation back home. I'm pretty sure where they could have worked out and trained and got themselves ready and then flown to Tokyo for the Olympics. The issue then now became they had to push it back because it was supposed to be at the start of this month. Now they had to push it back until the end of the month. So that's much closer to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So there was no chance for them to go all the way back to Australia and keep in a training camp. So they had to try and find some sort of place over here where they could stay COVID safe and continue to train and get ready for the Olympics. Yeah. So the just logistically, it just it just could not work out, and it's um, it's a really really unfortunate. But you know, and and then getting back into Australia, if something was to happen over here and somebody got COVID, the laws are still so strict in Australia where you've got to spend two weeks in hotel quarantine just yeah. to go home. So it's like it just ended up being a nightmare scenario and unfortunate. But a lot of guys were sort of holding on for that too in the Aussie team. So there's going to be a few guys that this is going to end their career. But is there anybody we would have known on that team? Yeah, a lot of guys. Um, Travis Blackley was was on that team. He pitched for Oakland a few years ago. If you, uh, I, and I didn't know what the final roster was going to look like. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it, all, it all depended on who was on what roster over here and who was made available by teams. And okay. some of the other teams have the advantage of guys are playing right now in minor league season. So they can just pick guys from the minor league seasons, ship them off to Mexico. Kind of like what you saw with Team USA, where a couple of veteran guys, a couple of young guys, combined to a lot of the Dominicans and Venezuelans, we had to do that and send teams to Mexico to try and compete, but we just couldn't, we just couldn't do it. So. Is there some kind of like contract that has to be signed between organizations? Like, I mean, Julio Rodriguez, for example, with the Mariners yeah. crushed it when he was playing in the qualifiers, but mm -hmm. do the Mariners sign off like insurance wise? Yeah. I mean, cause what if he were to get hurt and, I don't, again, it's not an MLB sanctioned event. So this is the difference between a lot of these like World Cups and anything but the World Baseball Classic is not a Major League Baseball sanctioned event. So there's different insurances and different drug testing and different all kinds of stuff. So it's it's all strange how it all works out. And then certain guys can't play because you're on the 40-man roster. But if yeah. you're, sorry, you can be on the 40-man, but you can't be on the active or it's just, there's rules in place to make sure that there's no confusion. But I'm still confused. I am bummed about that for you because I know you were Me super too. excited for that. And there were a yeah. lot of, I mean, that's that's a really cool experience for a lot of guys. So I was just more excited about Farm to Fame going on the road. So, you know, we could have been doing the old hotel pods, but now I'm just stuck here again. Well, at least you have a beautiful setup. I do have a beautiful, it's getting better daily. Looks great. Thank so you. you didn't want to talk about Luke Williams, but I'm going to finish that up. Go ahead. Within a six day span, this is the Philly who walked it off. Six day span, he helped Team USA qualify for the Olympics, and then he was called up to the majors for his debut. He got his first major league hit, first major league homer. His parents live in California. They flew to Florida for the Olympic qualifier. Then they flew back to California, and then they got a call from their son, Luke, that he got called up and they had to hop back on a plane like the next day and fly to Philly to watch him debut. Love supportive parents like that. I feel like that's what my parents would do. Peter, I feel like that's what you would do. Maddie Mass, I know that's what you would do. We love it. Peter's back. He did not want to talk about Luke Williams. Okay. It's fine. Let's get in to our rookie of the year watch. We'll go through <laughs> this quickly because the AL is not giving us much to talk about. But if you want to run through any guys in the NL, Peter, I'll let you yeah. kick it off. I'll run through the NL real quick. We'll go with Trevor Rogers. Start off with captain consistency again. Seven innings, four hits, two runs, eight Ks. For the season now, seven and three with a 2.02. ERA just snuck above two. Mm -hmm. 89 punch outs in 79 innings. So keep doing what you're doing. Congratulations. Well done. Did you see that Trevor Rogers was placed on the COVID IL for like one day? And they think it's because uh -uh. he got the vaccine. Then he's back the next day. Oh, really? But I, when I saw I went on the aisle, I was like, no, no. Oh. <laughs> no what are we going to talk about? <laughs> I know. Also, I'll tee you up for this one. Go. <clears throat> it's time for our key. Go ahead. Excellent. Jazz Tism. Mm. Had a jazz week. Mm, love that. Mm, 10 hits this week. You like jazz? Jazz. 10 hits. Outstanding. Key Brian Hayes came back. So from June 3rd to June 13th in nine games, he got 12 hits. 
and two homers. So he's well and truly back. And just a uh, honorable mention, Ian Anderson, who is a roller coaster at the moment, but seven innings, four hits, no runs during this week. So what a duel Ian that Anderson. was. Yeah. No. That was a. So my notes to add to you on Jazz Chis- Chisholm Jr. You mentioned. Uh, shocker, you've got added notes on Jazz. <laughs> You mentioned the 10 hits. That's good for hitting 345 on the week. He had four consecutive two hit games and he upped his average from 263 to 278. And he has eight home runs. That's a pretty good season. Did he hit them all this week? Hitting, yep. All of them. Every single one. Wow. No, he hit one home run this week. Um, so he's hitting 278 with eight home runs. We love to see it. Also very important note. He apparently dyed his hair from blue to purple. And he had some pretty sweet shoes on this week too. Always. I like to. I word. wonder, could you imagine if he found out that my wife can do custom cleats? Honestly, tweet at him because he likes us. <laughs> you should say something. Maybe he and Mandy can become friends and then Jazz and I can become friends. I think I'm going to let Jazz in and my wife, dude. Did you see him? <laughs> <laughs> Mandy. Oh, okay, me? girl. She doesn't want to splice it up a little bit. Love that move mm. with the shoulders. Thank you. Key Brian Hayes has a nine game hit streak. He has a hit in every single game since he's come mm. back from the 60 day IL. He's hitting above 300, 11 games, only 10 strikeouts. The dude's not striking out. He also has no errors at third, getting it done with the glove and the bat. We love to see it. Key Brian Hayes. I'm going to let you handle the AL too, because I don't like talking Thanks. about people that suck. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Three guys we're going to hit on. Your mean Mercedes, Casey Mize, Adolis Garcia. Right now, those are probably your favorites. Spoiler, who we'll talk about later in the show. Nick Madrigal is hurt, who was probably becoming the favorite, but he's on the 60 day IL now. Your mean Mercedes in his last seven, he's hitting 231. He's still hitting 290 on the season, but he just had that terrible stretch from like the end of May to the beginning of June. So the last week he had two multi-hit games. So that's that's good. Six hits this week. I don't have much more to say about him. I mean, he's awesome. He's funny. He wears a lot of chains. He has a cheeseburger. We love him. He, personality. We'll see how the rest of the season unfolds. Casey Mize. Consistent. For the Tigers. 12 games this year. All of them were starts. He's pitched to a 3.44 ERA, which we like. Mm-hmm. On Wednesday... He pitched versus the Mariners, who he had a phenomenal start against earlier in the season, seven and two thirds, six innings and three runs versus the Mariners this past week. The three runs were a three run home run to Kyle Seeger. But the thing about him, Peter, is he has that was his seventh quality start in his last eight outings. Yeah. So that's exactly what you're saying. It's almost like you can pin him in for five or six or seven innings, two, three runs every single week with six punches pitch to contact, stay below 100 pitches and to get you, give you a chance to win a ball game. And he's, he's going to grow. So he's going to learn himself and, and he's going to learn what he needs to do to get guys out. And he's only going to get better, I think. But just the consistency for a young guy, that's really good to see. And he didn't have the best control in his in the start this last week. He threw just 56 of his 99 pitches for strikes. So you think about the fact that he was still able to go six is pretty good for not feeling like you are finding the zone that well. And he and Spencer Turnbull, Tarek Skubal, mm. have been pitching well recently. If you remember, the Tigers started the season 9-24, and 24, and they don't suck anymore. They're nope. not good, but they don't suck. That's probably a lot in part to, you know, having three pitchers just mm-hmm. starting to pitch well. Adolis Garcia for the Rangers. We love Adolis, but this last week, only five hits. He's hitting 200. If you zoom out a little bit, last 15 games, he's hitting 214. Um, so he's still hitting 269 with 16 home runs on the year, but he has mm. definitely slowed down as well. Yes, Matty Mass. We made a big deal about Adolis setting records and everything for the amount of homers he hit in May. Yeah. He has zero home runs halfway through June. Didn't he have like 11 in May or something? Yeah, 11 in May and zero so far in June. And Peter, you're going to chalk that up to what you've said. I mean, just tape on him. It's going to be, yeah, this is this is the battle. And this is what makes the good ones great. They're going to find out what what you're not good at and they're going to expose it. And then you're, it's, it's how quickly you can turn that around and turn it into a positive. And then they'll find something else that you've been mm-hmm. now. Because you can't be, no one's a perfect hitter. So you're just constantly working on something. You're constantly changing. You see guys with their swings. They change their swings every single 
like hitting so mental, just so is pitching. The whole game of baseball is so mental because it's a game of failure as a hitter. And it's, you've just got to be so quick and, and not be so stubborn in, in, in your ways and, and try anything that people suggest and, and be open to, to making adjustments because yeah. it's, it's just the way the game is. Well, we'll definitely be keeping our eyes on those three guys, but those are the three guys in the AL who have just kind of... I know this is one not, not part of our seven-hour production meeting before we have this thing, but uh, have we heard anything about Akil Badu lately? No. So I can look up his stats. I can throw you a bone as well while I look this up and say that Randy Rosarena has just been consistent. Yes. Hits in every game for the last 10 days. But yep. when we say hits, it's one hit a game, one multi-hit game. While you're doing that, we can continue so, to do this, but I'm going to look up. Go ahead. Akil Badu in last seven is hitting 278. So I like it. So this is what I'm saying. Like, I just feel like there's no top three. There's maybe a top 15 in the AL. Randy's hitting 310 in his last seven. Randy's going okay. Maybe we add him in next week. I think we have to. Yeah. So he's at a 2.2 war right now, according to baseball reference. So when you look at war, he's up there. Mm -hmm. We'll add him in next week. Let's go ahead and get in to our top 10 prospects of the week, Peter, unless you have any other comments to make about rookie of the year watch. Not about rookie of the year watch. I just want to make it absolutely abundantly clear Mm. that you can't Google this list. Mm. You can't find this list Mm -hmm. on any website that you currently visit Mm -hmm. don't bother looking for it don't because it ain't there it's in the head of that genius right down there in that bottom corner yep and any list that you are able to google isn't updated weekly they're not updating you every single week you're seeing the same list for like three weeks or a month and then they update it we got you weekly oh our top 10 prospects (laughs) is brought to you by Sports Management Worldwide. At Sports Management Worldwide, they train you to be an MLB agent, an MLB scout, associate Mm -hmm. scout, a bird dog scout. Love that. Figured out what that is last week. Yep. I got the answer tweeted at me. Yeah. It can train you to become a Ben, a sports broadcaster. When I say Ben, I mean Ben Affleck, Peter Moylan. If you're a Braves fan, we can also be talking about Ben Ingram. You never know. The analytics go-to guy, sports gambling expert. Man, is that blowing up right now? Probably what I'm going to need. Someday, the GM or manager. You name it. If it's on the business side of sports, you can make money doing it. Peter and I are proof of that. Mm -hmm. Um, They have a training program literally for everything, which is sick. So how they do it is they're going to match you with a mentor. So guys like Dan Duquette, a three-time GM, Dan Evans, former GM of the Dodgers, Hank Jones, a 40-year scout, Oscar Suarez, a lifetime MLB agent. They're going to take you under their wing and teach you what you need to know in order to get hired for your dream job in sports. So it's an eight Mm -hmm. week long course. It's all online and they're going to give you the what you need to know and the who you need to know, which as we know in sports, it's mostly about the who and you got to know your stuff um, to help you get your dream job in sports. So you can apply for free at smww.com and use the discount code JOMBOY for $50 off the course of your choice. So it doesn't have to be baseball. They have baseball, basketball, football, hockey, soccer, rugby, cricket, even racing. So if you have any interest in working in sports, at least just like go to the website and check it out, regardless Mm -hmm. of what the sport is. Kind of surprised that in this ad read, they might have it. I need to look on the website that there's not like a social media job because that's like blowing up in sports, Uh, Mm -hmm. like a social media training program. But they have a ton of stuff there to help you in any sport, any part of the sport. Discount code, code, John Boy. I just said a bad word on accident. I didn't get it. Is chode a bad word? Chode, yes. Yeah. Chode can be also multiple things. (laughs) I think the first thing that comes into my head, (laughs) hey, we're in the trust, but we're in the trust dome right now. First thing that comes into my head is, the bold spot on a but that's not the code that you use you use the code john boy smww.com you can use the discount john boy for 50 dollars off the course of your choice let's go ahead and get into our top 10 prospects let's go top 10 i'm sorry mom i like my guy 
But if you like your guy, if you're passionate about your guy, I don't think he's going to beat my guy's week. But if you're passionate no. about your guy, you can go for No, it. he's not. And I've got a couple of guys that it's not just about their week. It's been a, so you start. Okay. Well, my guy won the week. It's okay. Nolan Gorman. Once again, yes. the Cardinals, they have a Nolan problem, y'all. Yeah. Nolan is the number one overall prospect for the Cardinals. He's currently in double A. Guess what he did this week, Peter? Guess what he did in his last five games? Not even this week. You can't. Normally, I'd, I wouldn't be able to guess, but I've this guy's been everywhere, so I can tell you, but no. I'll let you tell me. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Five games, seven home runs, 12 RBI. He had a two-homer well. game on Friday and a three-homer game on Saturday. So this week, which is not even factoring in his four-for-five game he had last Sunday, he's hitting 429 with seven home runs. On the season, he's hitting 328 with 10 home runs and 23 RBI in third three games. He had three home runs before this week started. Week, yeah. That's pretty hilarious. There was an article by Nick Trujillo, MLB Pipeline, and he said in June, Nolan Gorman is slashing 426, 481, 894 for an OPS of 1.3. 1.4 pretty much it's a 1.374 and mm-hmm. it's hit a home run in 13.5 percent of his june plate appearances That's he true. has hit a home run in 13.5 percent so nolan gorman I don't know what the Cardinals are going to do. Obviously, you have Arenado locked up at third. That's the position that Nolan Gorman plays. They've talked about maybe moving him to second, but all of his starts pretty much have been coming at third. They're not really moving him around. So I don't know if we're going to see him traded. I don't know. I don't know what the Cardinals are going to do, but he had a heck of a week. Good problem to have for the Cardinals. Yeah. I like the name Nolan. Do you? Yeah. Do you? It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. It's not a name that we have a lot in Australia. We have like Cameron in Australia a lot. Okay. Yeah. Heath. My brother's name is Heath. You're a girl, full girl dad, right? Yeah. So if you had a boy, what would you name your boy? Cooper, Jackson, something like that. Something, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'd have to think about it. You know the name that, that we like for a guy? Casey and I? Maddox. Yeah. I like it. I know. I like the name Maddox. Yeah. I was going to name my next dog Maddox if it was a boy because I like to keep my dogs... Uh, with the M's, Murphy, Murphy. Okay. Is that after uh, Dale? That was after Dale, yes. So we had Murphy, Marley, Monkey, and then we got Winnie. Oh, okay. We went with the Winnie's W. The... Anyway, the we're way off track. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, Shane Baz. Baz. B-A-Z. Shane Baz. 2017 Pirates, number one pick, number 12 pick overall, pitching for the Montgomery Biscuits. The last two games, I'm going to go back two games. He's gone five innings, three hits, no runs, eight Ks. Five innings, no hits, no runs, six Ks. So he's two starts in June so far. Ten innings, three hits, no runs, 14 games. He's he's ERA at the end of May. 14 strikeouts. What did I say? 14 strikeouts. ERA at the end of May was 3.57. His ERA right now is 2.48. Yay, so, Shane Bass. Shane Bass, congratulations. And not not to excite Pirates fans, he was traded to the Rays as all Pirates players end up getting traded to the Rays. So he's in Correct. the Rays. He was just drafted by the Pirates and he's with the Rays now. Okay. Proving a point that the Pirates can't keep any players. And everyone they trade away turns into superstars. Anytime you lose a pitcher to the Rays, you trade a pitcher over there, it's like... Bad idea. Yeah. Like yeah. you're missing something because that's that's not. Trevor Pluth said that his if he was a GM, his strategy would be just to talk to the Rays, find out who they they're wanting, and then put all those people on the forty man because they've obviously got something. <laughs> the Rays are genius, which okay. I thought was brilliant. Yeah, here's a guy we all know. This is 2020 one one Spencer Torkelson, the t- hello the Torkster. He's in Double A for the Tigers, first baseman. He got promoted from high A to double A yesterday on Sunday. He, and I like this guy's name, and Dylan Dingler, who is a catcher in the Tigers organization. He was the first overall in the second round by the Tigers in the 2020 draft. So those two guys, they're buds, and they just got promoted to double A together. The thing that's impressive about Spencer Torkelson's season 
is he struggled in spring training and that carried over into the first few weeks mm-hmm. playing in high A. So he started his high A season going six for 41. Okay. Well, now he's hitting 312 with 11 doubles, five home runs, 28 RBI, and 24 walks to 28 strikeouts in 31 games. That's a pretty good turnaround. One dot OPS in the month of June. He's hitting 447 with eight doubles, two home runs, 10 RBI. And this week, um, he started the week hitting 269, and now he's hitting 312 after going 11 for 20 this week with eight RBI and five doubles. He's a doubles machine, folks. A doubles machine. That'll definitely work. Yeah, so he's had a really good week, and he was promoted, so we'd love to see it. We've talked about Cade Cavalli a few times on this podcast, part of the big three. Mm Mm-hmm. 2020 first round pick, 22nd overall with the Nationals, currently pitching for the Wilmington Blue... Can't read my own writing. Is it Blue Devils? How do I not read my own writing? <laughs> I don't know what the was blue... there. I got no idea. Anyway. Blue Rocks? Uh, is it Blue Rocks? Well, somehow I can't spell and or read my own writing at the moment. So we're in for a good rest I of the day. for but the Nats. That there you go. Sense. So June 6th, he goes six innings, 11 Ks. June 12th, seven innings, no hits, two walks, 15 punch outs. Ooh. On the season, he's three and one, seven starts, 40 innings, 24 hits, 71 strikeouts. While I was doing my research, the first thing that popped up and said, he may be the best pitching prospect the Nationals have had since Lucas Giolito. And he was just promoted also to double A. It's a promotion party. Let's just go ahead and call this one the promotion pod. <laughs> You're welcome, Maddie. Why do you even show up, dude? I've got this. <laughs> we would be nowhere without Maddie. Matt. We would be nowhere. You're absolutely right. Love that for Cade. Okay. O'Neill Cruz for the Pirates, double A. Good name. Do you know anything about him, Peter? I know his first name's O'Neill. That's all I need okay. to know. He's a shortstop. He's a middle infielder. Okay. okay? He's six seven. <laughs> He's a six foot seven shortstop with an eighty grade arm. Um, so this week, I can't. You know what I'm doing, by the way. I'm, I gotta look him up. I feel yeah. like when I see videos of him, because he had a he had a three home run week um, and a four game stretch. I feel like he doesn't look that big at the plate, but homie six seven. It's like Aaron Judge playing shortstop. Yeah, which like is tough. That's a tough position to play. So this week, he went eight for 20. He hit 400 with three home runs and six RBI. Get this, Peter. Friday, he had a three-run home run that went 463 feet. It went off the bat at 120 miles per hour. Since the start of StatCast in 2015, the only major league players who have hit a ball with an exit velocity of at least 120 miles per hour, John Carlos Stanton, 10 times, Gary Sanchez once and Aaron Judge once. Mm. And our 6'7 O'Neill Cruz did that. 22 years old. They have a roller coaster in their outfield. I don't know if it's a rundown. What are those amusement parks? I don't know if it's part of the, I don't know. There's a roller coaster in right field and he just keeps hitting these home runs through the roller coasters. And they keep saying that he's taking it for a ride and I love it. Um, obviously a ton <laughs> of raw power. Three run home run on Friday. Saturday, he went three for three with the double and a home run. He has a hit in 15 of his last 16, and he's six seven. Can somebody please message us and tell us whether the roller coaster is still active? Because I would love to be on that roller coaster while he's at bat and just run the gauntlet. It's like, come on, yeah. like just yeah. have a <laughs> hit it here target. There, so just drive it over the hit it here. <laughs> anyway, that's just me. Bring a glove. Great story, though. Thank Excellent. You. It was awesome. I'm going to move on to, can you pre- help, help me with this pronunciation? Ken Waldichuk? Like that. Okay. Ken Waldichuk was drafted in the fifth round of the 2019 draft, 165th overall. He's in the Yankees high A, shocker, Maddie. Um, I've tried to have, figure out a way to word this and have it like build up and be really cool, but there's no way. He's given up no runs this year. Wow. He hasn't given up a run this year. He's had made seven starts, 30.2 innings, 12 hits, no runs, and 55 strikeouts. 
Opponents are batting 120 against him, and he has a 0.082 whip on the season. And it was wow. like, it was almost like the Yankees didn't know what they had in him just yet because they sort of had him throw two innings the first time. And then he went three innings next time. Then he, they were like, well, he's having some success. And then he went four, and then he went five. And now he's sort of consistently going five and six innings every time he goes out there, but he still doesn't get up a run. Wow. You know how hard that is to do as a starter? Yeah, I know exactly. I bet you do. Yep. Yep. So <laughs> shout out to you, Ken. Keep doing what you're doing. Ken Waltz to Chuck. Waltz I Chuck. got the Chuck because of Randall Grichuk. Waltz okay. Chuck. Waltz Waltz Chuck. Chuck. Waltz yeah. Chuck. Yeah. Okay. I probably am going to need help on it. My next guy's name too, Ezekiel Tovar. Nailed it. For the Rockies, he's in low A. He's a shortstop. This week went 11 for 26. That's 423 for those of you who are not a math pod. He hit three doubles and two home runs. Back-to-back games, Saturday and Sunday were his home runs. He upped his average from 286 to 303. He had a three-hit game this week and a four-hit game this week. And I think I wrote something wrong because I have in these stats that he's hitting 307. So he's either hitting 307 or 303. Take your pick. But what's interesting is he has five home runs in 33 games this year. And in his first 108 games of his pro career, he only had two home runs. So he's finding a, a little bit of a power stroke. But yeah, 423 this week. We'd love to see it. Good for you, Ezekiel Tovar. Robert Davis Daniel, hmm. otherwise known as Davis Daniel, was the 2019 seventh round, 211th overall pick. For the Angels. Okay. His year's been okay, but last two games, five innings and seven innings, both one hit performances. Wow. So two and oh with 12 innings, two hits, 16 Ks so far in June. No runs? Zero runs. Wow. Is did you add Robert into his name or is Robert actually in his name? Robert Davis Daniel is on his MILB okay. page. Okay, this is a guy who we've seen twice up in the show this year, and that's Kiebert Ruiz for the Dodgers. He's a Dodgers top prospect. He's in AAA. He's a catcher. He homered on Thursday and then hit two home runs on Friday. That was his second multi-home run game of the season. Like I mentioned, he was up with the Dodgers twice this year, six games, seven at-bats, and he had one hit in those seven at-bats, and it was a home run. Um, But in AAA – This doesn't sound as impressive because Sunday he went 0 for 5, which really dropped his average. But this year he's hitting 276 with six home runs, nine doubles, and 15 RBI, which doesn't jump off the board at you until you find out it was done in 19 games. And that makes it a little bit more impressive. He was like on the inactive list for a week when he was in the minor leagues. I'm not sure like what, what was the cause of that. And then he's, like I said, spent some time up with the Dodgers. So he has only had 19 games and he's a guy who appears to be MLB ready, but there's just some solid catching up options at the MLB level right now. And yeah. he just hasn't really gotten that full-time chance. Um, but maybe we see him traded. I don't know, but he's um, getting it done down there. Well done. Thank you. No golf clubs. You're not going to lend the golf clubs this week. We can like- get- I feel bad that his average that he went over five on Sunday because his average would have sounded much more impressive had he not. Well, just think about this way. Okay. Maybe he goes four for five and five for five the next two days. And then when our pod comes out, you don't have to feel bad about the over five. Yeah. Okay. Good vibes. There you go. Trey Ambergay? Mm, Ambergy. Ambergy. Okay. He's been on Talking Yanks before. He's been on Talking Yanks. Friend of the pod. Friend Friend of the the, friend of the company. Let's go ahead and say that. Friend of John Boy is a friend of mine. Friend of Jimmy's is a friend of strange people. Yeah. Uh, he has a hit in every single game this year. Okay. You counted 20, Maddie. I'm going to go ahead and dispute that and say it was 18. But if you think it's 20, it's 20. But he's on an 18 and or a 20-game hit streak thus far. He did miss some time from May 11th to the 29th where he was on the injured list. But since that, for the season, he's hitting 388 with six home runs and a 1.184 OPS. So he's not it's not just out of the blue. He hit two 275 in 2019 as well. So this is he's had a history of being out of hit. But you know, 2015, 13th round pick, 393 overall. So we're talking about a guy that wouldn't even get drafted 
this yeah. this year. I'm not sure, Maddie. You know, you don't know more about. It. He's he's not in their plans or or anything to get caught up. He's just having a good year. Yeah, and the fun thing about him is that he went to high school with Trey Turner. So it's mm-hmm. Trey and Trey. Two Trays. Oh. Two Trays. Probably spelled differently. I would know because I'm not an English pod. Those were our top 10 performers of the week who you should probably be familiar with their names. So you can sound smart with your friends. And also maybe if they eventually get the call, you can be like, oh, I'm going to get them in my fantasy league or something like that. Or maybe you want their baseball cards. I don't know. Wander Franco's card sold for $200,000. You can basically say I knew about him before you knew about him, which yeah. was what my <laughs> friend did to me with the band Nirvana. Oh. I went over to his house one day and okay. we were just hanging out playing video games and I mm-hmm. saw this blue album cover with a baby's penis on it. <laughs> and I said, wow. what is that? Theme talk today. <laughs> and he said, that is Nirvana. You've never heard of them before. And I said, you're right, I haven't. And he put it on and I was hooked. hooked. So that's basically what we're doing here. Okay. Yeah, we're helping, we're helping the people. Helping the people mm-hmm. help the brains. And Penis is said in school, so I feel like I can say that and not get in trouble. Yeah, health class. We are also a health pod. Yeah. Maybe they'll be on the band. We'll be on the band pods list, and all of a sudden yeah. we'll just get like an underground following. Yeah. Okay. Working on that. So rookie matchups this week, Peter. I feel like you didn't embrace that that at all. You just that we're okay. going to get an underground following. Yes. And that I'm working on that. I think we've breached a lot of different topics this week where we can really just like get turn a listening ear. The amount of tags Maddie can throw on this particular podcast is going to spread us like worldwide. Didn't yeah. we get an email that we were like the top ranked sports podcast in like South Africa or something? Oh, obviously. Didn't we, Matt? But yeah, we did get one that said it's like the top baseball podcast in South Africa or something like that. Love that for us. <laughs> rookie matchups for real. Casey Mize, who we talked about versus Seattle rookies. That's Dylan Thomas, Taylor Trammell, Godie, and Jake Fraley, an LSU Tiger. 0 for 9 with 6 Ks, all versus Casey Mize. So Casey Mize took care of his kin. Zach McKinstry, old friend Zach McKinstry, back up with the Dodgers. He was hurt, oblique, not great. He back versus Dane Dunning, two for two with a double and two RBI. Very happy for Zach McKinstry. Hmm. Injuries, Peter. An injury we are all very sad about. Um, Nikki Singles, Nick Madrigal for the White Sox. 60-day IL with a torn right hamstring. I cannot imagine how painful that is. Do you ever have hamstring problems? I did. Um, I had it because that's where they took my two things for my two Tommy Johns. Not that I was necessarily needed to run very much, but it was more any kind of running after that would have to be, it was just a pain in the ass. I couldn't go full speed. Did they try your wrist? Yeah, I didn't have one. The, the Paul Maris, I didn't have the Paul, the Paul Maris. So, so did they cut both it. of your wrists, say, uh, shoot, and then go? No, no, it. they just did the test. They did the test yeah. to see if it's there, and then it wasn't there. How do there, you know if it's there? you got to, like, put your fingers. There's, like, a little thing that, that shows up in your – I don't have it, so I don't know what it looks like. But there'll be – when you do this, the, you'll see a line. This? You've got it. Yeah, I got, you got it. it. I yeah. got it, everyone. There you Mom, go. Dad. Yeah, you can have Tommy John now. You should just get it done just to really dive into the experience. If you want to support me, Kelsey, you will go and get Tommy John and go through all the rehab. Peter, I don't even have my ears pierced if you think I'm getting any kind of surgery voluntarily. Uh, Uh, I don't believe in needles. They don't exist in my world. Um, Not for political reasons, because once again, I've mentioned this before, I have the pain tolerance of a slug with salt sprinkled on it. So Nikki Singles, 60 day IL with the right torn right hamstring what kind of sucks about this peter it's the same way that we saw luis robert get hurt he was just trying to beat out an infield hit and that's like he's just going full speed down the line and it backfires and that sucks because that's you know you you saw people just absolutely attack acuna what year what however many years when he's not not running it out and um you have guys who are hustling and obviously we want guys to hustle but it just sucks that it that he got hurt um so in the next week within the coming days they're gonna decide if he needs season ending surgery or if he can recover without surgery but regardless he's going to be completely inactive for six weeks sucks 
And what sucks even more about it is in his last 20 games, he was hitting 360. He was slashing 365, 420, 568. And he was hitting 305 on the season. That was good for 10th best in all of Major League Baseball. He led all AL rookies in hits and average. I was just going to say, he's a guy that could probably run away with that AL. Yeah, too. especially right now. Um, but now he's not going to be eligible to return until the second week of August. I mean, I could go on about stats he's put up this year but yeah that just sucks for the white Sox, and it's just a ton of injuries but they've dealt with it already and it's just another guy they just have to try and i mean they've done a great job in in yeah. covering up holes so far and and doesn't you've really not noticed yeah i mean they're one of the most exciting teams in baseball still yeah. despite all the issues that they've had Eloy, whether it be Luis. team chemistry or manager or whatever that they've, they've managed to to weather the storm and keep keep going uh, the only other pretty notable injury from this week, you guys should care about this. Well, I don't know if you should care about this, but the reason we are talking about him is because this is a guy that we kind of still are and we're expecting to see up in the show this year. His name's Ryan Rollison for the Rockies. Mm. He's in AAA. He's the Rockies' top pitching prospect. He had to get his appendix removed because of appendicitis. So he'll miss a month, six weeks. But again, this is a guy that we were expecting to make it to the show this year. This is an obvious setback between double A AA and triple A of the season combined ERA of 367. He was drafted out of Old Miss with the 22nd overall pick in 2018. So this is a guy we could have seen to the show in three years after being drafted less than three mm-hmm. years. And who knows how this will affect him. We're keeping our eye on Alex K- Karoloff for the twins. He's been dealing with an ankle injury on and off this week. He's played some games. He's taken some games off. Really hope he doesn't get hurt again. But those are kind of uh, the only three injuries, unless you can think of any, Peter. Any oh. others? No? Okay. So I don't like to talk about injuries. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like Trev when they talk about slump watch. He doesn't like it. Yeah. Okay, what is our Aussie lingo as we are Melbourne Aces fans? Another one from the queen, my queen, Mandy Moylan. Shall I just call her on the pod? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello. <laughs> I need an Aussie slang for today. Sorry? I need an Aussie slang. Oh, um, uh, nappy or dummy. Okay. I like nappy. Thanks, baby. Love you. Bye. Nappy. Love you. Bye. Put, give us a sentence. I'm running to the store to grab a packet of nappies. Napkins? That would be very on brand. I'm going to say uh, a binky. You know, did you hear what she said after nappy? No. She said dummy. That's what we call a binky in Australia. We call that a dummy. But Close. we call nappies, what? we How call you... nappies diapers. Wow. So you're on the same today. You you were close. Why were you thinking? Why were you thinking babies? Why did I not catch on to the baby theme? It's today? the ending in why, right? Wow. Huh. You know, I feel like when you say like cute words, they end in Y. Like, oh, get like your Kelsey. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Petey, Maddie. Oh, we love it. Diapers and binkies. Nappers, nappy. Nappy. Nappy and dummies. Dummies. I've been called that a few times in my life. Me too. Um, all right, folks. Anything else anybody wants to add? Jacob DeGrom is still not human. Yeah. What's his ERA? Like 0.5. A little concerning that he keeps getting an MRI after every start, though. Yeah. Or is that just... But he's, like, talking about it. He's, like, talking about what's hurting. It's not a secret. Is this what you do if you have the greatest picture that's ever been made? Or you just get an MRI in between every start, make sure everything's okay? Yeah, I guess. Poor guy. Put him in bubble wrap, please. It's only that tube for an hour as they just... Dun, 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 How's a Francisco Lindor doing? Is he he's, like above 250 yet? If he's not getting spoken about, it means he's doing a serviceable job. Lindor, he's hitting uh 220. 220. Oh, yeah. He was good and then he kind of slowed back down. Okay. Well, that'll do it, folks, for today's epi. Because we're <laughs> doing where is it end and why? Because it's cute. We appreciate you guys listening. We hope that you learned some stuff today, whether it was about prospects, Omaha, your definition of a chode, who knows? (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm sorry, mom. I'm sorry, dad. I'm sorry. I'm not. This is going to be hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you guys so much for listening. 
watching. For watching too. I'm a big YouTube guy, so. YouTuber. Farm on, farm often. Oh, we have merch on the website now. I, I ordered hats and shirts and sweatshirts on the Jumboy Media website. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, we love y'all. Hope you have a great week. We're excited to follow along some college baseball. Omaha, baby. Omaha. We love you. Farm on, farm often. Peace.